One of the best things about going to the cinema is that your mind gets transported far away from reality. Of course, I can only enter the story mentally. There's no way yet that I can physically get involved in all that action. But in the not too distant future, a helmet like this could help me to believe I'm in any number of three-dimensional worlds by putting me right in the middle of all sorts of interactive computer-generated adventures. Since the scenes don't really exist, programmers around the world experimenting with this concept call it virtual reality. The first Tomorrow's World presenter to look into virtual reality was Maggie back in 1986, when it was thought its first application would be in computer-aided design. Now, by looking through that window, you're able to see into the world of the computer. And by wearing the helmet, you're able to see it in 3D. So down there, there's the television I was talking about, with my glass on the top. Move around, and up comes my flash new table. There it is. So everything is in the room just where I said it was. Since then, a new helmet has been developed, so that the single TV set has been replaced by two liquid crystal screens, one for each eye. And now you get a full colour illusion of three dimensions and in much greater detail. Of course, at home we can only offer you a single screen image, so you'll just have to believe me when I tell you that the sensation of depth that I'm seeing is quite convincing. Well, this is some sort of landscape, hills over there, perhaps a, a lake, that white piece, turning round. Aha, a room. Let's go and see what happens in there. Some mysterious figures over to my right. That's a door straight ahead. Oh, I'm just about to bump into an aeroplane, so we'll just move around, perhaps go over there to the corner and see what's around this way. Behind me is a window and a mysterious blue figure. There's a table over there, and over my left shoulder, an orange figure. Well, these changing images are being generated by computer in direct response to the movements of my head. I'm actually standing in an invisible electromagnetic field being transmitted from up there. Signals from three perpendicular receiving coils and a sensor on the helmet here tell the computer where my head is in that field and which direction my head is pointing in. And the computer then produces the appropriate view. And as you've seen, I can also try and move around objects in this non-existent room. But it doesn't stop at helmets. Electronic gloves and suits have been added to gear worn by virtual realists in California. The computer images can then follow all sorts of body movements and even let you handle virtual objects. I'm gonna try this new switch, see if I can turn on the fan. You can move around buildings, perhaps before they're actually constructed, just by pointing to the place you want to view from. Even car designers could test drive new models before committing themselves to the real thing. The technique, as we showed on last week's programme, could also be used to remotely control a robot, perhaps in space. And in medicine, the bones of this skeleton hand, produced from real body scanning data, can be studied as they follow the movements of the glove. Virtual reality's potential applications are limited only by our imagination. And the technology can even stimulate that when you let it take you into imaginary worlds like those created by the American programmers. Meanwhile in Britain, work has been progressing secretly behind closed doors on the first practical application of virtual reality, elaborate video games. This machine promises to fly me through a virtually real environment as if I was in a vertical takeoff jet. Like before, the helmet allows me to survey the scene. Over to my left is the control tower, and over on the right, a red jet, and that jet is waiting a pilot. The chance to be a high flyer? Well, how can I refuse? Right, if I just put my helmet on, I ought to be able to see where you are, Howard. Right. Gooey. Oh, is that you over there in the green plane? That's me. I'll tell you what, why don't you take off first, and I'll try and join you at about 1,000 feet? Fine. Right, I'll just get into vertical thrust here. 
and then up I go. OK, I'll try and follow you. Which way are you turning? Shall I turn to my right? OK. Right, I'm going to head out to sea and see if I can find the aircraft carrier. It'd be quite a challenge to see if either of us could land on it. Where have you gone now? Oh, and away you go, right, fine. <laughs> I'd better try and catch up with you then. Where are you, Howard? <laughs> I'm still over the land. Yes, I'm having a bit of trouble finding you. Off I go, over the mountains. I'm going over the sea now. I yes, just... I'm just inside of the sea myself. Well, let's see if I can see you. Nope. <laughs> All this great expanse of blue around me and suddenly zooming up towards me is this aircraft carrier. Oh, I'm crashed. I'm back at the airfield again. All right, we can see the frigate over there and hopefully the aircraft carrier right below me. You can see a tip of it. I'm not sure whether I'm actually on it, but I've got to do it a bit more slowly, otherwise I'm going to dip in the sea. There's the main bit. Oh, what am I on? All right! I've landed just on the very edge of the aircraft carrier. <laughs> I think I must be hanging over the edge. How are you doing, Kate? I feel pretty ill. Well, you know, that's just the beginning. They're already working on the next stage, which is to add real motion. These prototype personal simulators promise to be the ultimate machines in which to virtually escape reality. Along with the simulated motion, these graphics respond directly to your flight of fancy. We're seeing a two-dimensional virtual world, but when helmets are incorporated, it'll look and feel full 3D. And imagine many simulators linked up into a global network. If that happens, minds thousands of miles apart could share limitless experiences in their own fantasy world.